Okay, so you're wondering, how the heck do I get skill points? Previously in Fantasy Star Online 2, we actually got our skill points just by leveling up. However, this is no longer the case with New Genesis. So there are a total of 20 skill points. I've actually spent them in both my trees for my main and subclass, but just not shown on screen right now. And I'm sure a lot of you are asking, well, how the hell did you get 20 points? I'm going to show that in this video. I'm also going to explain a little bit about skill trees because I feel like there is a little bit of, I guess, a learning curve in terms of filling it out. There is a potential for you to make mistakes. Currently, we've only been distributed one all skill tree reset pass. So make sure you're not wasting that pass. So the class counter is where you spend your skill points. It is to the left side of the tower in Central City. It is just this blue shop here. So we talk to the class counter person here. You can set your main and subclass here. You actually need to progress through the story a little bit to access the subclass. So just make sure you're doing those tasks for the actual story quest and eventually get access to them. You actually get your first skill point just by going through the first initial task. You can't even get to a Ryuki device without doing a cocoon to get one of those skill points first. You can also set your skill points here like I've filled out on my tree right here. While changing your class doesn't have any restrictions or any consequences, making a dud skill tree actually can. We have only been distributed one skill tree reset pass. And as far as we understand, if it's anything like PSO2, these will likely only be distributed as we get new classes or if major class skill trees overhauls actually come through. So make sure that you are taking your time with this skill tree. Look online if there are any builds. But the main thing you want to do is actually read the text. You can see here this Warcry skill for Hunter is a main class only skill, which means that if I never had any intention of playing Hunter as a main class, but I was going to play it with my subclass, well, I wouldn't actually put that point into that skill there because I'm not going to be able to use it. There's also kind of another one where basically if I've got a subclass that has specific weapons such as Hunter here with Sword, Wired Lance and Partisan, I can only use those Hunter skills if they are explicitly for those weapon types. And this is whether or not it is that specific subclass weapon type or it is a very specific weapon such as Rob Bear or Talos for Force. All other skill points that don't have any yellow text that don't say main class only or requiring a specific subclasses or main classes weapon type, those ones will basically work with your main and subclass together. So you really don't have to worry too much about those ones. So just take your time, read all the text on the right hand side as you do hover over each of these skills. It'll tell you if it is a main class weapon or used with a specific class type weapon. Just read all that stuff. This is the most important thing in regards to your skill tree because this tells you exactly how the skills work. Another point to note as well when filling out your skill tree is that you can spend all the points but it doesn't actually commit to them until you confirm it with the confirm button at the bottom. So you can play around and just check out what you're going to get for multiple levels of a specific skill point. So just play around with it and just remember it's not going to commit until you actually hit the confirm button down below. So just make sure you take your time with it. It is not a rush. You've got plenty of time to read everything on the screen. Now, an Arc Slayer community skill sheet is being put together with a Google Drive spreadsheet. I'm going to link it in the description below. It may not be completely filled out at the moment with every class's builds, but this will be the thing to bookmark and check back later to see if some of the people that do really know the classes in the community have put together some community builds that you can go and put together if you just want to play it safe. So check that out in the description below. So the rest of the video, I will be pointing you in the direction of all of the cocoons and towers where you can get skill points. And it's worth noting as well, cocoons will give you one skill point, whereas towers currently will give you four skill points. Towers are also probably something you should wait until you hit level 15 before you do get started with these. But you can see, if you want to pause the screen right now, this is every tower and also cocoon listed on the map. So you can go and map that out for yourself. But otherwise, I'm actually going to show you just a sped up version of me moving from either Central City or from one of the fast travel points, the Ryuka devices, which are the green towers on the map here. I will speed them up and I'll also mention any notes if I do need to. Cocoons are kind of like a VR mission. You just need to follow the objectives to the left hand side. Main mission is what we're focusing on with just unlocking these skill points. But if you want to go back later and get a perfect time, perfect score by completing all the side mission objectives, these may eventually become something that will be tied to titles. So if you want to get them out the way now and done, there's not much content at the moment and it gives you something extra to do. And if we do get titles and these are attached to them, then you can get them done ready in preparation for titles. There we go. That was just the first one done. The tutorial one, pretty straightforward. So the first one here is first steps. This is one that's actually going to be the very first one that you will do within the task in the game. This is basically a training mission showing you how to use your jump, your double jump, wall kicking, and also using updrafters and your photon blast. You're probably going to be needing to do this anyway because it will train you the mechanics of the game. 
if you're doing the task of this, it's actually going to have pointers or markers showing you the exact direction. But we're just heading out the northern gate to get to this one. This is definitely the easiest, but out of all the cocoons, this one is a single player cocoon. Usually they are multiplayer, so you can take a total of four players in. Pretty straightforward, this one. To the west of Central City, you'll find the Enhanced Enemy Cocoon. It's also right next to a Ryuka device. This one is going to put you up against an Enhanced Enemy. Worth noting, once you find one of these cocoons or towers, you can actually click on them from the map and teleport straight into them. Now, while I'm leaving the Western Gate to get to this one, I just want to make a note that just above my character is the Ryuka device for this area. Make sure you go and grab that. You can see it's just that little tower above my character. To the right of it will be the cocoon. This one has an enhanced enemy. You need to focus on a specific wedge-shaped core. That will remove the shield on the enemy. And once you break that, you'll be able to damage the enemy normally. This one is just a boss fight. It is very quick and easy. Now, next one is in a level 12 area. This is Northern Elio. This is the swift jump one. Double jump and glide practice, you try to use as little glides as possible with this to get a good score. But I also want to make a note, you just have to complete these, you don't have to do the side objectives to get the skill point. So again, we're heading out of the northern gate for this one, and we do have to walk quite a distance, or glide if you've got the hover. But just keep heading in this direction until you actually reach a big wetland area. There's going to be a huge structure in the middle of the wetland area, and to the right of it, just beyond it, you'll find the cocoon. There's also two Ryuka devices in this area you should try to find. Next up, we have a tricky one in Mount Magnus. This one is actually not located on the Mount Magnus itself. It's actually located in a cave for this. So there's a higher chance you may have gotten to this area right here and wondered where the heck is the cocoon? Well, it's actually right underneath us. So if we go to the Balflow Falls area in Southern Elio, there's actually a cave behind a waterfall and we're going to go there right now. I've set a waypoint for me on PC it is hitting the R key on a location on the map. It is actually displayed on your map if you look at the bottom commands. So if you're on console, you can go and set a waypoint if it makes it easier. But just jump across this area and we're going to try to find the Ryuka device. Once we've actually seen that, we should actually grab that. And then we're going to jump just to the left of it down this waterfall here. And then we're going to head behind the waterfall and then follow the path at the fork, take the left. And through this cave, we will find the cocoon right at the end. This is actually a great place to farm Dualamite and also Photon Chunks as well, just to note there. But there we go, there's a cocoon. Next one is located on top of Mount Peacot in the south. And this one is just a enemy rush. We try to kill as many enemies and collect cubes as fast as we can. I'd actually suggest you start from the Mount Magnus Ryuka device, as I've marked on the map here. And then from there, we're going to move towards Mount Peacot. It's hard to miss this one because it's literally right on top of the hill as you can see right here. So we will be doing some Skyrim parkour once we glide across to this mountain area. But for the most part, you could probably just like find your way around to the top, but I just think it's a lot faster just to jump up at myself. So first off, let's just glide across this area to the other side of the canyon. And then we're just gonna start jumping up the cliff face. Remember, if you are running, you can do a double jump and then a wall kick up the mountain. It's gonna give you much better height than you would if you weren't doing the dash. But there we go, we're at the top now and we've got the cocoon. Next one we're going to go to is going to be near the starting area. So this is in Western Elio. This one's actually level 15 recommended and it is a battle based cocoon. So we're following this one out the Western Gate again, and we're actually going to just move back through the way we got to Central City at the start of the game after the initial scenes at Elio Town with Aina and Manon. So once you get in the cave, you don't have to follow all the way around. You can actually jump down a ledge and just make it easier to get through and get out of the cave as quickly as possible. We don't go straight down to where the town is. We actually want to go left and we want to head up this updrafter. It's actually a Ryuka device we just passed as well if you want to make note of that. But otherwise, just keep following this around and eventually you're going to get to this cocoon. Super easy to find and we've unlocked the Ryuka device on the way. So the next one we're going towards is actually going to be kind of in the same area but just to the north. So it's actually probably best to move to the Hellfire and the Wetlands Ryuka device. If you remember the way we went to get to the Northern Elio cocoon, you could actually just find it by going that direction. But as you get to the wetlands, just turn left on the inner part of that wetland area and you'll find the Ryuka device we're talking about here. So this one's called Test Flight. It does require you to use a lot of air maneuverability. This one is pretty tricky, so just take your time with it and it shouldn't be too difficult. Remember, we're just trying to complete it. We don't have to do the side objectives to get the skill point. So we're in the Halfana wetlands, we actually want to go along the side of the cliff face. There is a path on the eastern side and you can see all of the weird little bridge things above us. We actually want to keep moving until we get to an updrafter. We take that up to the next area and there's a Ryuka device here we can grab. We actually don't jump straight across the cocoon. If we go up to this little mountain you can see on the horizon there, you can jump about midway up there and then you should have enough height 
to just jump across. It is very steep, so you may slip a few times. It is a little bit tricky, but just jump across to the weird island pillar thing and you've got the cocoon unlocked. Final cocoon is actually in Lake Halfia, and the best part is we're going to pass our first tower along the way. This one puts us up against a Bujin, which is the kind of ninja style doll. So we're heading out the northern side of town again, but instead of just going straight ahead, we're veering to the right a little bit and you'll see a tower on the horizon. That is what they look like. They're just a big tower, pretty simple to find. But if we keep moving past it, it's on the left hand side of it. Keep going and you're going to find it in the middle of kind of like a lake or river kind of area just on this little tiny island. It is really hard to miss. You just got to just run in that direction and you'll find it pretty much. Next up, we're going to towers. We've got three of them. So these ones actually give you four skill points for completing. These are a little bit trickier at about level 15. If you've already found them, they look like this on the map, these little tower style icons. So the first one we're going to go to is Great Wall. We kind of passed that one on the way to the previous cocoon. You may remember Great Wall from the beta. This one has actually moved location north a little bit. This is kind of like a micro dungeon going against groups of enemies, trying to jump in the air, get some cubes, and then wrapping up with a big dietal fight. So you know how we did it in the last one. We go through the northern area and we just keep moving towards that cocoon we went to. But instead of going to the cocoon, we just head to the tower. This one's pretty straightforward to find. I don't think I need to say much more than that. Next one we have is going to be the Error Runner. This is in the location that the Great Wall Tower used to be in. There's actually, if you go to Mount Peacock to the cocoon and you just jump down the cliff, there is a Ryuka device down at the bottom and it's right next to that actual tower we're going to go to. This one's another aerial one. Take your time with it. Aerial ones are a little bit frustrating unless you are seasoned in aerial maneuver in these kind of games. Again, just focus on the goal. So here I am at the Mount Peacolt Cocoon. And like I said before, if I open up the map, you'll see there is that little Ryuka device, the green little tower next to the other tower. That is where we need to move to. Mark a waypoint like I've just done. And then we just move here. We just jump down the cliff. I'm actually gonna show you where the Ryuka device is because this is a very useful one. And I feel like a lot of people tend to miss this one because they just focus on the tower. So just to the right of the tower, just below me, there we go. You can see the Ryuka device just showing up beneath the trees there. You can actually just go and grab that one really quickly and then move just behind it and grab the tower straight forward. And the last of the towers currently available in PS2 New Genesis in the launch period is going to be the Alter's Rush one. So remembering back to when we unlocked the Northern Cocoon in the Western Alio area, we're actually going to just jump to that Ryuka device right there. Should be a very straightforward way of getting to this one. Now this one has a lot of enemies, but you really just have to focus on the boss target enemies to progress in this. Basically, you just don't want to waste your time on the extra enemies. Just focus on the enemy that's marked as a target and you'll get to the boss and just down it. Straightforward, just move from the Ryuka device and then we just need to jump up this cliff face, but take this specific updrafter because it's going to take us up higher than we actually need to go. Don't go as high as Pride Rock, just jump down and it's just below Pride Rock. Easy. But there we go. That one was kind of a long one. Hopefully that explains exactly where you need to go to get all these skill points. I hope this was useful. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.